What's up, guys? The Maverick Moment Episode 5 is happening right this second. And with me today is, they call him the Cobra. <laughs> His name is Mike Kirkland. He's a singer in Orlando. This guy can melt your face with his mouth. That is his superpower. Uh, he's he's in a band called Through You. He's also in a new band called uh, First Hit. First Hit. And they are recording new music right now. Who the heck is First Hit? And what does First Hit even mean? Like, is that like the punch? Is that like uh, is it, are they gonna like knock you out with one punch? I mean, what is it? What does First Hit mean? Are they are are they gonna have the first hit record? Because that's already kind of happened. I asked that same question. Uh, actually, I thought it might be the video game one because I always loved that when you got the bonus points for the first hit in the fighting game. <laughs> um, but they actually said it was the first hit of the Doom. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, so we know what their stance is on um, <laughs> altering substances then. Speaking of like, you know, mind altering substances and using what's from the ground and then injecting it into your body and, and having it affect your mind. You you were telling me that you had just recently read this book that made this analogy about the mind and how the mind is like a garden. Yeah, uh, it talks about how you can basically treat your mind like a garden and that if you tend it or let it grow wild, the one thing it will do is always it'll produce and it'll produce fruitage according to the seed that's planted in that garden. And so you can cultivate that garden with right thinking and with positive thoughts. And so you uh, sow and you receive fruitage of that same seed. And so it's causality from mind to matter, basically. Are you trying to say right now that your thoughts create reality? I'm creating Adam Arnali right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here! Wow! This is great! No, but think about it this way. In in Mike's garden of the mind, he planted a seed whereby which I became popped into existence, and then I acted as though that happened. <laughs> that's uh, true. By the way, um, that sounds a lot like that book, The Secret. You know, let me break it down for you. Let me tell you what I think about The Secret. First of all, oh, and let me start over. Uh, if any of you out there are lovers of the secrets, um, watch out. Basically, the secret's not a secret. There were like three books that came out that were published that uh, spoke about what the person who wrote the secret learned from. In other words, she read other books that weren't a secret and then wrote a book then called it the secret as if it was a secret. Well, you know, the serpent's always been wanting to give you that secret knowledge. Well, it's it's interesting. Um, but here's the problem. I've done all this crazy research into quantum physics and oh, all of this one of those crap. Guys. I'm one of them peoples. Basically, the secret paints this amazing picture. Like, I'm going to create this thought, and then it's going to manifest in reality. But, like, you know, the bottom line is, is that what, what Mike just said about the garden, in that if you plant a garden, it requires action, man. It requires you to go out and do it. That's true. And, you know, in terms of quantum physics, we have something called the third dimension, which is where physical beings are, like Mike and me. And then we have the fourth dimension, which is time, which or duration, or motion. In other words, because I'm moving right now, I'm not actually operating just in the third dimension, I'm actually operating in the fourth dimension. The fifth dimension is actually called probability. In other words, what is the probability that what Mike said, I'm gonna pop into existence, and then I popped into existence? Uh, I would say it's pretty low, actually, the probability of me not being there, even though I was there, and then him saying that he's gonna manifest me, and then I popped into existence. Right. But then, what's the probability that I would act it out anyway? And the probability was high, and that is exactly what happened. But here's the problem. If I say, hey, I'm going to have a house. I'm going to go have this mansion. But you don't build it or hire the workers then and it, draft the plans. I didn't pop into existence. Well, well, you know, if there's a secret where I unlock this door and then mansions magically pop into existence, then how come I just had the thought that didn't happen? 
And the answer is, is because we have this crazy thing called probability, or what uh, realists would call real world. <laughs> Uh, and I'm not saying that the secret's wrong, I'm saying that the secret isn't telling you everything. It's not telling you, oh, you're going to encounter all of this resistance and all of this hardship and you need to make sure that you stay consistent and you stay vigilant and, vigilant, vigilant and you take action. It's true. Very true. But I'm not saying that you can't achieve your dreams. And I'm not saying that the secret isn't necessarily incorrect. I'm saying that it's not a secret. Um, speaking of things that are no longer a secret, I just went to Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, I went to Employee Preview Night, and no, I'm not an employee, and I <laughs> hope to God I never am. Um, well, I hope that they do hire me, Universal, but I don't want to be hired by the theme park. I'd like to be directing a motion picture for Universal. Uh, and then maybe if I'm cool like Alice Cooper, I can get my own uh, scare house. That'd be cool. But uh, I'm here to tell you right now that the Alice Cooper Scare House was the worst house that I have ever been to at Halloween Horror Nights. On top of the fact that you're going to bring in this iconic character who is Alice Cooper, who is known to scare people with just the way he looks, and, and he puts together the worst house known to man. I mean, are they grasping for straws at Universal Studios? I mean, are they, like, paying in ungodly amounts of money to, like, get these uh, these stars and, and these licensing contracts to try to boost up revenue and then, like, totally, like, just dropping the ball, like, when it comes to actually making the house? I mean, I don't know. Are you going to go to Halloween Horror Nights? I'm not going to go to Halloween Horror Nights. Why not? I went one year and uh, I just don't like it, man. I don't like the idea of uh, paying money to be, you know, played on my fears. I mean, it's one thing to be uh, afraid and, and uh, you know, want to go over there and feel, I don't know, the, the energy with your friends and like all that. But when I went there, it was just like, you know, uh, I don't want to surround myself with the Halloween theme, you know, a lot of research I've done on, uh, you know, pagan festivals and whatever. As a Christian, I really have uh, no interest in trying to lift up, you know, those kind of vibes or lift up those kind of ideals or lift up those kind of, you know, uh, realities. You know, I don't, I don't want to promote evil. I don't want to play in evil. And I don't think it's something I should flirt with. Uh, you know, I'm not afraid to be there. It's just I usually, it's not even fun for me anyways because I look at something so critically that I break it down and I deconstruct it. And then, you know, it's almost like I'm a party pooper. I'm a negative Nancy when I'm there, you know, so, you know. <laughs> well, you know, isn't it true, like, people who really worship Halloween, like, it's a real holiday. Don't they, like, I, I read somewhere that, there are these groups that like sacrifice babies and virgins and women and like which would require you to kill someone yeah definitely I, I personally am never gonna kill anybody you know you know hope to God uh, unless you know I I guess I'm forced to which would suck but I guess I don't even <laughs> <That> would suck. <laughs> I mean maybe I'm not even supposed to do that maybe it's like if somebody's gonna kill me like maybe I shouldn't even try to kill them back or like just to survive I mean I, that's a that's a really intense like the anti I, I don't want to even get into that but the bottom line is, is that you know anybody that you know goes and kills people as a ritual to Halloween you know needs to uh, get locked up somewhere maybe have a TV timeout, you know what I'm saying? You can chase that back to Marduk. Well, yeah, Mar ooh, Marduk. Now that's an interesting character. Marduk was what? A Babylonian king? He's the creator. No, Nimrod was the Babylonian king. Marduk was oh. said to be his uh, divine entity as the sun god. Ooh, divine. Which then broke off into different names, like Baal. Right. And, and, that all was after the the war of the angels and demons, right? Right, definitely. And, you know, this is all biblical stuff. I mean... Well, we just said the war of the angels and demons. Well, there hasn't been really the full-on war, was there? Was it, yeah, there was war in heaven. Or is that Revelation that talks about war in heaven? Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm not exactly 100% on the topic. I mean, 
So, so, so. so we'll say since the uh, angels fell, third of the angels fell. Right. Who is uh, a Well, I will break it down for you right now. Whether or not you believe in angels and demons, there is some really bizarre shit going on in the world. Some spiritual stuff, some quantum stuff. You know, things not in this reality. You know, I have seen miracles in the positive kind. I have seen things happen that were just so weird and profound. You know, you know, if you if you open your eyes, if you're conscious of of what's happening, I mean, it's it's not hard to to make the assertion that there could very well be angels and demons. Even if you don't believe in angels and demons, you could even make the stretch to say, well, maybe they're not angels and demons. Maybe they're just quantum interdimensional beings but wouldn't that be the same thing and if it is you know you know what do we do about it i mean it you know do you believe that there's angels and demons mike and if there is what do we do about it yeah i believe there's angels and demons what do we do about it what can we do about it we can do about it i don't know how to answer that i mean we're here existing between those realms i guess um, since we're a little lower than the angels, we were made a little bit lower than the angels, and in the image of God. Okay. We honor God and hope the angels do the same, and if not, they'll be demons. <laughs> <laughs> if not, shit's going down. <laughs> um, well, I don't think we should entertain, I think we should be aware of the energies around us, and we can uh, be aware of those by... Uh, warning signs, just like if you know it's going to rain, you know that because you see the symptoms and the warning signs in the air and in the sky and you smell the moisture or, you know, you see the clouds rolling in, you hear the thunder or whatever it is, you know, and, uh, you know, with either good or bad energy, you know, you can associate, you can associate that to, you know, ministering angels or, uh, demonic influence, you know, and, um, I think the demonic influence has a big part in uh, media since it's one-way communication. It's uh, really pouring out seeds on our mind garden constantly. We don't determine what seeds go back that direction. Everything comes towards us. And of course we could choose to filter it and hopefully we do that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think um, you know, with that and with uh, music and what the lyrics are on music, you know, I listen to like a super hit song that's going on and I even like the song, I hear it, and, you know, I can't tell what all the words are and I sit down and I read all the words and I'm like, wow, this is not a good thing at all, like, that I would be chanting to myself or singing to myself. And, you know, if everything in the world is vibrational frequency, mm. then you would think that everything influences your vibration and you influence every vibration around you and with things we harmonize or with things we find dissonance. And, um, so I think it takes a moral compass and uh, spiritual eyes to be able to have discernment, to be able to tell uh, those frequencies and those vibrational, you know, uh, energies. Uh, I feel like uh, with music, a lot of that, you know, we could have bad vibrations that are being pushed by mainstream and being showered over us. You know, I don't really know of many positive hit songs right now, but that's an interesting point. It's like. Here's a real, here's a real puffy song. It makes us feel all warm inside. And then you read the lyrics and it's like, I'm gonna kill you. Skull fuck me in the ass. And then pour weird potion all over me and let's chant the demons. Not to say that that exists. I just made that up. But, <laughs> uh, you know, I think it's interesting. I actually watched this uh, documentary on Katy Perry uh, last night. Yes, I did it. Uh, you know, I admit, it, I was with a girl. And she really wanted to watch it, so I suspended my my own entertainment compass of what <laughs> is good, a good idea to read and whatnot, and or watch and watched it anyway. And you know it was crazy because Katy Perry talks about how she was raised very Pentecostal. She was raised with the church. She was the only movie she was allowed to watch when she was a kid was was uh, you know Sister Act two or whatnot. I gotta go, but um, Mike's gotta go. Sorry guys. I gotta go to work. He's gotta go skydive. One of my other secret powers, I can fly. All right, man, let's say goodbye. So th th this 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 episode has become solo. No, here's what I'm saying. Katy Perry's doing the interview. The only movie that she was allowed to watch when she was a kid was Sister Act 2, and she 
was doing the interview during the documentary and had this like Illuminati symbol right there on her shirt, and it's like, oh well, you know, I, I, I realize that you were raised a Christian, but I'm not so sure that you are now. And she even says in this documentary, she's like, you know, I still believe in God, you know, blah 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 blah. It's like, well, which God do you even believe in? I mean, we don't even know. So um, I absolutely concur with what you're saying, Mike. And Mike's got to go. To be continued. To be continued. Um, we're going to end the show with one of Mike's new songs from his new band, First Hit, and it's going to be pretty dope. Check them out. Search First Hit, and uh, this is the... <laughs> <laughs> I got to go. I love you. You're awesome. Thank you for having me. I can't wait to do it again. That's my coffee cup. This has been another episode of the Maverick Moment. Stay Mavericks. Stay in the moment. Signaling a feeling I'm closely kept inside In case you were exciting The other side of me The other side of me Signaling a feeling I've closely kept inside In case you were exciting the other side of me The other side of me